we're going to be labeling our periodic table today. So you got this packet or your papers in your packet. There are two pages. Um, I have cut the dotted lines where it said to cut. Um, you can see here, I believe it's um, in your packet. So you can see that this is what yours looks like. I cut off the top and I cut off the bottom. Um, but it says glue here, so I did not cut that off. And then on this side, it says cut, cut. I cut the top, and I also cut the bottom. Then you glue this page where it says glue here, and it ends up looking like this, and it all blends together. Um, so you can see that my top page is that second page, and I glued it on the side that says glue here. And so it one, becomes one big large periodic table that you can fold and it goes into your notebook. All right, so talking about the periodic table. So we're just gonna start over here and we're going to label um, periods, which are horizontal and groups, which are vertical. So I would like for you to write that on your periodic table. Now, please try to space it similar to mine so you'll have enough room for everything. Now, we know that group number one is called the alkali metals. So we're going to label alkali metals. And we know that all elements in group number one have one valence electron. So that means that the elements in, or the electrons in the outermost ring, there's only one. Now there may be multiple rings, but that one valence electron is all it has. Group two, they are called the alkali earth metals, and they have two valence electrons. Group over here, this group is called the rare earth metals. Now, all of these transition metals, they're really weird. Um, so we're not going to discuss their valence electrons in this class, so you don't need to know those. But you need to know that this group is called the rare earth metals. And then all of these are transition metals. When we go over here, group 13 is called the boron group, and it has three valence electrons. This group, group 14, is called the carbon group, and it has four valence electrons. Group 15 is called the nitrogen group with five valence electrons. Group 16 is the oxygen group with six valence electrons. 17 is called the halogens, it has seven valence electrons. Group 18 is called the noble gases, and they have eight valence electrons. So you need to know all of the different group names and how many valence electrons they have. So that's what you're going to label now. If you need to pause your video and label that, you can do so. Now, we're going to go over here, and we talked about how when we go horizontal, those are called our periods. So in period one, there is only one energy level. In period two, there are two energy levels. Period three, there are three energy levels. Remember, energy levels are those shells in your elect, um, electron cloud. So, somewhere down here, we're going to draw an atom. And we're going to have our nucleus. And we're going to have energy levels. Okay? So, we're going to have our protons and our neutrons in the nucleus. Then we have electrons in these energy levels. in the electron cloud. So label your atom like this. Okay. All right. So we know that this period has seven energy levels. So all of these, you need to label all the different levels. Okay. Now, when we discuss each um, element square or um, periodic table notation 
is going to look like this, okay? So we've got our atomic number here, and I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can see. You've got your atomic number at the top. You've got your symbol, your name, and your atom average atomic mass at the bottom. So you need to draw an element square and label it, okay? If you need to pause the video and do that, you can. Now, we're also going to um, color our periodic table, um, and we're going to note if it's a gas, a liquid, or a solid. So for my metals, I color them all green, and you can see from my key, that's where it is. My metalloids are orange, and remember, they're on the stair step over here, and my non-metals are yellow. Now, on the gases, I circled the symbol if it's a gas. If it's a liquid, I put a star. So there's not very many. We've got 35, 80, and 112. Those are going to be our liquids. And then all of the other ones are solid, so I didn't put a mark next to them. So you need to pause the video and color. Now, keep in mind that even though hydrogen is over here because it has one energy level and one valence electron, it's over here on the periodic table, but it is still a non-metal that is also considered a gas at room temperature. So make sure that you don't forget hydrogen when you're counting or you're labeling your um, non-metal gases. Um, so when we go to draw one of these, like a Bohr diagram or a Bohr model, our periodic table tells us exactly what we need to draw. We have hydrogen with our nucleus with one energy level and one electron, our valence electron in there. If we're drawing lithium, we've got two shells or energy levels, and we'll have one valence electron in there. So it tells us exactly what we need to know. We don't ever have to guess. So you need to make sure that you have colored your periodic table. Now we're also going to talk about reactivity. And we've talked about reactivity when we talked about chemical properties. Um, so elements, we, we know um, that Henry Mosley created the periodic table um, according to the atomic number, but elements that are in the same groups and periods or close to each other have similar characteristics. Chemical and physical properties are going to be similar. So with reactivity, we're going to start with the least reactive over here, and we're going to increase reactivity as we move across the periodic table. So that's why I drew my arrow going this way. Now, when we talk about reactivity on our, period, our groups, increasing reactivity going down the periodic table. So our elements over here are going to be the most reactive. Our elements over here, least reactive. So you need to make sure that you label your reactivities. So when you get done, your periodic table should look very, very similar to mine. Now keep in mind, you do not have to use the same colors um, to label everything, but I would like for you to use the same colors on your key. So please get your colored pencils um, and color your metals, metalloids, and non-metals the same color, okay? So I will have a picture of this. Um, or I'll have this video attached to Schoology so you can label your um, atomic structures and your periodic table.